Hi everyone, a game talk. We just played Go Ahead Eagles on Thursday, and uh, to my surprise, uh, Luke, because we had the pre-stream, pre-game stream, and I did say that I don't think we're going to win. I was thinking about the draw, but I wanted to go to, with two-one. But that was more more based on the recent performances of Ajax, the way we played football, and Go Ahead Eagles was a little bit better than Zwolle, for instance. But I have to take my words back. After that first half, I was surprised. Uh, the intensity, the energy we brought. And I thought, honestly, um, well, if we can keep this up, we'll win. Easy. Easy. Second half, basically our level dropped a little bit. We didn't come in uh, on the second half on the pitch the same way we did in the first half, in my opinion. So you did see more like a 50-50. It can go either way. But still, man, how many chances did we have? Uh, to score second goal, maybe a third goal. And then still we had to win the game. Uh, wasn't it for the mistake at the very end from maybe our best, you know, uh, one of the best players of the season, Ramay. But today he was shaky a couple of times. I don't know what it was. How do you see it? I mean, back-to-back -back game talks, I know. But I have to ask you, Luke, um, thoughts. I know it's frustrating. I know. It's just, it's just deflating, man. It's deflating because... You go from a first half where, you know, it's some of the best stuff we've seen in a few matches. If if anything, like a long stretch of matches, potentially. Intensity is there. And, and you know, there were chances there to be taken. Uh, Bergvine at the start, the, the cross from uh, Guy that comes in early and he always just wants to shoot his right. He never wants to take a chance his left and it goes wide. Those kind of chances, you have to take them, right? <sighs> the first half was good. The second half, I don't know what happened. I'd, I, I would love to know or um but skip that says like at half time like does he just go in and just do nothing like just open a magazine and sit there and read for 10 minutes because they come out just with no intensity anything right and you know like i always say he just he, you don't see anything from the sideline you don't hear about anything in the changing room you see nothing you know and you know yeah okay we conceded because ramai made a mistake but how many times he saved as a season and i know this one was costly but it wouldn't have been costly had we taken our chances right um so you know ultimately it's still the same old same old, same old rubbish man from from fan skip man yeah look um we have to go through a couple of things even though we don't feel like talking because it feels like a loss even though it's a draw yeah, man. But, yeah but it felt like you know if we would have won this one three points as that lost points, um, you know, and they say Drew, um, go ahead, Eagles is a couple of points behind us. You know, we can get away from them, etc., and secure more of that fifth position going into the end of the season. But now it's, it, it feels like, you know, that, that bad taste in your mouth. That's basically what's happening right now. Look, um, I have to touch upon that goal. Um, so let's go back to the first half, that goal of Guy. Um, of course, great pass by... Uh, by Chotz, he was amazing that first half, to be honest. Um, let me ask you a question, and then we talk about Guy. But I want to know from you, and maybe also from the viewers, there was a kind of a discussion. Uh, of course, this is contention for the best goal of the season. But in your opinion, is this the best goal of the season so far? Is it better than the Medic one earlier this season? Yes, <laughs> without without a doubt. And, and Why? you know Why what? is it for you? Why? Because I think I think the occasion for him as well, in a sense of of um, the interview he had. I know I you know back a few weeks ago I said you shouldn't have had this interview. You don't need these kind of interviews and things. I just work on your game. He had a really good game today, and I think that was just a start, you know. And and he was putting good crosses in, good passes in, and it, it almost like he wasn't panicking every time I got on the ball. Every time he got on it, um, I think. <laughs> It's hard to top a centre back scoring from a centre half scoring from as far as medic did, but the guy who's been having it tough, and you know, hopefully this is the start of, of Sunday for him. But also, I under, the way he hit it, I didn't understand how it just went straight top corner. It looked like it was just gonna go up, and I don't know. And it was top corner as well. I think for me, it's better than the medic goal, man. Yeah. Just all right. Just was... All right. Um, so, guy was also important uh, last uh, Sunday. Yeah, he gave an assist, of course. Um, and now you're seeing we're seeing a different, uh, you know, different um, side of him basically as a, as a player, which we haven't seen earlier this season. What do you think it is? Is it because he just switched a button? You know, he just 
he just became better or is it maybe the system is becoming much more or better for him it's better suited for him to play the way he wants to play what is it for you is it confidence level that's back because of Sunday maybe giving giving the assist um obviously the system allows him to have less of a defensive responsibility mm -hmm. uh if he loses the ball higher up there's more bodies behind to receive the ball for example when he gave the ball away multiple times against Feyenoord if he did the same thing higher up there's players there to to cover and and hopefully could defend the, the transition but um but also um i i, I feel like there's no expectation at the moment with that side. Uh, Hoya is, isn't good enough. Um, you know, and then just, we talk about Gai, we talk about Wrench or whatever. He's obviously set on having a back three and Wrench as well on that right side. And so you choose out of Hoya or you choose out uh, or, or, or Gai, right wing. So I'd rather have someone who would cross than someone who doesn't. Um, so I think there's no expectation, takes the pressure off a bit. No defensive responsibility to an extent, but because there's no expectation from him, no one really expects a lot from him. He's able to make decisions and make mistakes to learn from. That makes sense. He's very young still. Was he like 21, yeah. I think? 20, 21, something like that. Yeah, something like so, that. He's very young. That's true. Um, so, yeah. you know, these things he probably hasn't been able to make mistakes uh, at Viborg. So, making him at a higher level now, maybe he's learned from him. Maybe he's learned how to deal with some adversary adversary and things like that in the team so um but also I feel like when Helinson's around that area I think that he makes it a lot more e easier for a lot of players to play because he just leaves the space and he pulls yeah. players away and that's what that's what Helinson does really well and I feel like what he does for Berg Berghaus he did slightly for Gai to an extent um and has done for a couple of games in my opinion but you know, not to put too much pressure on him. You know, I ho hopefully he builds on it. I don't expect him to score that every game or get an assist every game. But hopefully, if he contributes in the way he did in the second half, I know our second half was poor, but he was playing some good passes on the right side. Um, hopefully, the he can continue building it. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, compared to the Zwolle game, of course, we didn't have Akpom up front. He's injured. He has ankle problems. Uh, we heard. So um, Van het Schip tried to play uh, Bergwijn now as a striker. Um, but also that means that Hots would not start on the right wing position, but start on the left wing position, which is much more a natural position for him. Um, your thoughts on how they perform, both of them, on that new role compared to Sunday? Hots was, was, was really, really good. Really, really good. And we knew that he would bring this kind of energy to our team. And that's something we've missed and something you actually expect from Bergwijn is get the ball, be proactive, you know, you, you, if no one presses you, drive at them. And then when they press, you could play a one nice one-two or then play the pass to pull them away and make space for someone to dri dribble into or, or run into, right? Um, Hoss was, was fantastic. And you could tell he was tired or fatigued because when he came out for the second half, he was just didn't look right. None of them did, but he especially didn't look right physically. Mm -hmm. um, and we always say that this system makes everyone work harder. You have to run further. There's less attackers. So the attackers have to do a lot more, um, you know, running and, and movement and things like that, um, which makes it more impressive that Linson's able to do it without going off at all sometimes, right? Um, but Hoss was really, really good, really proactive, crossing, hit the post as well. So he's got an idea of, it and, uh, of what he would like to do and how quick he wants to make a decision uh, to cut inside and, and, and finish or, or try to finish. Um, I thought Bergwijn did okay to fill in for Broby and what Broby offers. Kept receive, uh, receiving the ball, dropping and receiving the ball. The difference is, is that he's able to receive it and run at someone. The only problem is, is his attitude stinks, absolutely stinks, and his work ethic isn't that good. So it's, it's, it's not Broby. Broby recently. Why, why are you saying his attitude stinks? Uh, what are you referring to? Something specific? Well, it's, it's, main, it's mainly when he came off, but when you watch him during the game, if you, I know it's hard to just watch him because the camera's always going left and right, mm -hmm. but, you know, there are times where uh, someone will try something, Fitzgerald will try a shot or a pass, or, or Hots will try something, try to beat a man, and then he'll just throw his hands in the air, or he'll, you know, do this, or he would have some kind of attitude, and it's like they're young players, they're trying to be proactive, not everything has to go to you, right? You're not even creating space for, for, to pull a player away. You're just stood there trying to receive a ball that you're probably just going to shoot and miss or have it blocked. So then, and then, and then he doesn't like being subbed. And then, you know, it just, and it, it sets a bad example for the younger players. Look, about the you substitution, know? right? Uh, we, we could all see that he wasn't happy, but could it be it wasn't because he was subbed, but maybe because he wasn't happy with his performance? He thought he, he should have scored or something. 
or don't you think that's the story? It's it's very difficult for us to judge based on what we see, right? We don't know what he's thinking at the moment, at the time. Sure, but I would lean more on the side of I think that he believed at one 0 the game's not safe. Why are you bringing Fitz Jim on? Someone who hasn't played football in 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 since he come back. He's not played any football. If, if I, I can't really recall, unless unless you know otherwise, but I don't think he's played any football. Not even one minute for the first team since. And you brought him to play on the wing. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, right? Mm. Um, and and I can I can understand that because as a coach, you want to make sure the result is safe before you start tinkering and making substitutions. And and okay, he, he I don't know if um, Van Skip's trying to make a point by subbing the captain, but. You know, if I you're think, the captain, yeah. you want to come off the pitch, quickly give the arm banner, right? Get on, it's one nil, let's get it safe. Not walk off, not shake anyone's hand. Do you know what I mean? It's you, yeah. if, if you put him and then you put Jordan Henderson next to each other, do you think Jordan Henderson would walk, run off the pitch and, and not shake anyone's hand or throw a strop or anything like that? Is it there's a diff, two completely different uh, personalities and leaders? And we all know which one we want and one we don't. And it, uh, and it And it does feed down into the team. If the coach isn't coaching, the captain needs to coach. Do you understand? Kind yeah. of like um, Rinus Michels and uh, and Cruyff when they'll play. You know, Cruyff will play for uh, Ajax and, and coach on the pitch yeah. for while well, Michels was in, was in the dugout, right? So, yeah. Look, let me go through the comments. I do have yeah. some questions, if, but it could be that the viewers also are asking the same questions. So I want to give them an opportunity to ask you questions so we can discuss yeah. as well. Um, so, guys, if you have a question for uh, Luke, let me know right now. Um, so let me scroll back a little bit. So I can check the earlier comments first. Um, nickname, uh, Pinch, Pinch, Pinch is saying nickname was almost right about guy carrying us to victory, which he said in the pre-stream, actually. He said, if I'm not mistaken, he said guy and Tahirovic will carry us. Honestly, you were very close with that prediction. Um, we were all laughing. Apologies, nickname. You were you were actually quite... Uh, yeah, I don't know how you how you predicted that, but that was really cool, uh, really awesome to uh, to see. Um, guy has more potential than many think. Depends how you use him. Besides, uh, yeah, the first season. Uh, yeah, correct. Uh, nickname is uh, reacting. Yeah, Derenko and Pierre have to buy Guy shirt after disrespect in the pregame <laughs> in the pregame stream. Yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll pass it on. Um, and then he's also adding, I'm the oracle. Yeah, yeah. You have to tell us your secret. Um, let me see. What else do we have? Yavid is saying, admiring uh, to Van het Schip, how hard, no self-reflection and dignity you must have to not quit with immediate effect after such a performance. And if it was just once, Sparta, Hervein, and so on, you name it. Um, hold that, because that's probably a question that I have for you as well at the end. Um, Progressivo is saying, second half was shit. They thought they were safe. I thought we were too. What a shame. Uh, Papimento also saying frustrating ending, which it was. Uh, Casilla is saying uh, our captain should have scored at least one goal and would have would still have that three points. Yeah, we didn't take our chances. I mean, we're we're looking at Bergwijn because he has the big he had the biggest chances, but that first half we had so many shot opportunities. Also from you know like uh, I, I remember Tahirovic had a shot. I remember um, Taylor, Mosfer, left. Taylor, um, mm. so many so many people basically. Um, Javid is saying, Juan, can we get your opinion about how on earth Van Schip is there our coach? Please, no, we have no choice argument. Who's going to appoint him? We have our own. I mean, even the people above us, uh, above Van Schip, that have to make decisions right now, it's a mess there. We don't have a technical director. We don't have a CEO anymore. So, you know, I think they have different uh, uh, priorities at the moment, to be honest. But I understand your point. But I think we should have yeah, we're just sticking with, with him. We made a decision. We have to stick with it right now, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, the way you want to see it. Rich Pinch Pinch is saying, this loss is just an extension of a terrible season, so typical that we felt it coming. I didn't see this one coming, to be honest. I was already, like, ready to come on the stream and say, like, hey, this Ajax is showing um, a revival or something, the way we played, but, yeah. Anyway. With Sabi, I thought I, I, I said we wasn't even going to get a point. <laughs> so exactly, uh, Lars was saying people will now focus on blaming Ramai, and of course it was a mistake. But guys should have had a minimum of two assists today, and we would have won this game comfortably. 
Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I agree. Isaac's frustrated, can't take the shit anymore. It just doesn't end when it rains, it pours. Yeah. Only for the week. We have the worst manager in the league, no doubt in my mind. Guys, a disgrace. Yeah, people people are also, also upset on uh, from the trip. Um, like I said, hold it for a bit uh, until I go through all the comments. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, Indrek is saying, for me, Skip threw away this game again. Substitutions were uh, really, really strange. Forbes, Hoyer, Fizz, Jim. I mean, what the actual F? And Ramai should be banned from trying to catch that ball. Um, look, this is basically what I wanted to ask you. I, I think this is a nice bridge because Indrek is basically saying what I wanted to ask you. How much should we in the second half? So first, you already made a remark about, I don't know if Andre was reading a magazine in, in I mean, of course, as a joke, uh, during halftime break. <laughs> the way that they came on the pitch in the second half compared to how they played in the first half, that's a huge difference. But apart from that, the substitutions that he made. Look, we know that um, we know that Hotz has to be brought off eventually. He cannot play full 90 minutes. We know Bergman just came from an injury, so he cannot play 90 minutes. Those we understand. But maybe the other choices that he made. What can we look critic? Can we be critical about from Skip about that? Yes or no, or is it just we're trying to find now? You know, we're trying to find people to blame and these kind of things. But at the end of the day, we should have just won the game. One hundred percent, Van Skip's fault. Yeah, we. Okay, so you you, you can't play Hots nine minutes. You can't play Bergwijn nine minutes. Fine, absolutely fine. So then, the very least you can probably do is put Hlinson on the left, Forbes on the right, or vice versa. With like Rykov in the middle, right? But Fitz Fitz Jim Fitz Jim like we always have a conversation. Is he a six? Is he an eight? Is he a, is he a wing back? No, no one knows. He's one hundred million percent not a winger. One million percent, right? And and it's not like he's done bad. He didn't do anything that makes you think, oh, he's too shit to play. He hasn't made a mistake. When he come on, I thought he did fairly okay, considering he's not played any football, he's passing the ball, you know, he was trying to get in positions. But you you, you take someone like Hotz, who was affecting the game with a direct approach, nice and quick, dribbling at the person, to someone like Fitzjim, who who doesn't dribble, like, he's not a winger. He's not a winger, you know? And, you know, he, he's not even a creative 10, like Linson would be, or like or, or like a, or like a Burkhouse. He's No one knows what he is, but he's not an attacker, Right. And and so you lose the spark that you had completely and that directness. And you know, I don't understand it. I would I would have rather put on Forbes, and I'm very critical of Forbes, but at least he would have tried to beat the man like he did towards the, the game down the wing, trying to put a cross in. That's still something. And it's not Fitzjim's fault, but it's definitely on the manager. I I just don't understand. I don't even understand his formation in the first place. I don't understand the decisions he makes for the time. Like, like how have you started Bergman in the middle? Does that make any sense to me? You've brought Rykov. Yeah, you bought Eikhoff, uh in, in in the summer, or well, sorry, in January or whenever you bought him, and then you you don't play him. You play him for ten minutes. That it, it makes he's a striker and he makes zero sense because who's to say that Eikhoff doesn't go and score two goals just because he's had 30, 40 minutes to play? I don't know. And then that kick starts him. So then he challenges Bobby for 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 the base, right? Would you but, have? Would you would you think like other maybe another coach, an experienced coach or a different type of coach? I guess uh, again, I'm not trying to. Uh, put Van der Schip in the corner or, you know, like be very critical because it's all hindsight. Let's be honest. We're talking about what happened now. Uh, but at that moment, he has to make a choice. But you know that Broby cannot play. Ekman cannot play. He chose Bergwijn as a nine. But you know that Bergwijn, like we said, we know you know that Bergwijn and you know that Hotz both cannot play full 90 minutes. Um, would you start both of them then? Knowing that you have to take them off earlier good point good point um it would depend on the strength of the team if if you had um someone like Burkhouse available for example then it then it changes the dynamic um I, we have to play every game to win right and 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 personally for me today you're winning one nil you've got to get that second goal and then you can start making changes if they have to play 90 minutes today they have to they they, they just have to because, well, especially Bergwijn, I don't expect a, a young Hotz to, 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 to come on and play 90 minutes and really try to drive the team. That should be Bergwijn's job. He should be the one spending 90 minutes. And maybe that's why he's annoying, because 
he needed you would to be, have, you would have taken that risk and just kept him 90 minutes absolutely with the score line with the score line what? that we had one nil. If you if if you, if you get a penalty, he could take a penalty. Is what he does best apparently in the team, right? Mm-hmm. But even if he were to be not fit or get injured against Feyenoord, for example, it's not like we've had him for the last four months anyway. It doesn't offer that much on the pitch most of the time anyway. It's like it'll be actually missing anything. You probably get more out of Lykov in the middle, and and of course on the left. Then if you have Bergwijn in any positions, right? But it's because but but it all comes down, I think, from the manager. It has to. It has to be. And, you know, he doesn't sound like he's able to take charge of anything. You know, you know it, the weird it's, thing it's, is, you know what the weird thing is? We even got help by the by the ref. He even blocked the guy for us. So I thought this cannot go wrong anymore. But but like, but I I know I know that we, you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be beheaded for this, right? But I know that people talk about Ajax and then you know play 4-3-3 is the way we got to uh or 4-2-3-1 whatever is the way we got to the Champions League semi by playing the same way every time absolutely mm-hmm. and I'm not saying change change it to a defensive when you see one nil out but you you you'd have player for player substitutions right so you have yeah. a winger for a winger a 10 for a 10 or whatever yeah, yeah. so you can still play the same way and this goes to show that this is the problem with, with, with this team and the setup is that you have so many good attacking players Voss is back. I don't know he's not an attacking player, but Voss is back. You know, you can rotate the midfield a lot more. You can maybe play Taylor as a 10 again because you have Voss in the midfield or something like that. You Now, you, now you've got Hots and, you know, you're bringing players like Van Axel Dongo and, and Kaloko and, and players like that can, can all come in and, and play some sort of role, wide areas, right? But I, I don't understand why he thinks that we need five at the back when we still concede shitty goals. We still defend like shit. Well, I already I already touched upon it a couple of times also before the before the game. Fanat Schip um, said in an interview not too long ago that he believes this formation brings more stability and fits also more the creative <coughs> players. Um, Who's so the creative players. Who, no, I mean the creative, no, <laughs> no. He's talking about Berghuis, Bergwijn. They're not available right now, but he thinks with this formation it will be best suited for them as well to play in this formation. That's what he said. I'm just calling him. Don't don't yeah, be angry. Yeah, yeah. I'm just calling him. <laughs> Could never be angry at you, Khan. You're just a whole thing, but, <laughs> right, exactly. but, I, but I but I don't understand because because there's not even any rotation or anything. There's no like move. Hots was everywhere. That's why he was tired, right? Taylor came into to the left side a couple of times, but spent half his time at left back. And I know he's played left wing back, which is fine. But if he's gonna stay wide, why are you putting any? Why are you putting him there? I. Yeah. He, he's he's winding me up because he's making stupid decisions, rookie decisions, and that's big coming from me because I'm not even qualified like he is. But he's making stupid rookie decisions, right? Instead of actually coaching them how to play football. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. I understand your point. Uh, let me go to the comments. We have a couple of still. Uh, I have a question actually from Christian for you, for Luke. With the upcoming match against Feyenoord this Sunday, what would be the best way to play against them? Yeah, it depends who's available as well. Right? I could tell you how not to play against them. <laughs> I could tell you don't play five at the back. Don't play with Taylor at left wing back and try this whole he's going to come into midfield thing. It's just it, the play, the players just aren't on the same level to be able to do that. You can go and look at a Man City and look at an Arsenal because they're able to do that. They're big clubs and, and they have the players. Declan Rice can do centre back, Cam, 10, 9, 8, whatever he wanted to do. We don't have players like that. We have to, you know, prioritize the football first, right? As as opposed to positions and, and things like that. It needs to be there's your defense, there's your midfield, there's your attack. Let's learn how to play football. Because I look at Mansvirk and there's a good player in there, for example, but I feel like he's being held back. And Tahirovic at times. Tahirovic has got the great passing ability that we saw on, uh, against Vola. And then, you know, at times you, you can see him trying to start things. But if you've only got two players there holding, who, who are they going to pass to? Do you know what I mean? Because Taylor's sat on the touchline, getting chalk on his boots, doing nothing. He's probably, his heat map is probably just a line like this and, and a little bit inside. That's it. And, you know, and on the right side, you know, Guy was up and down, which is great, and Linson come inside. But, I, you know, where's the penetration? There's no one actively getting the ball and trying to play. And you can't rely on just Burkhaus to great stuff, which is why you need Hots playing left wing every week if he can, or or on the right, whatever. He needs to be in that team because he made this happen today. I just hope, even though we're playing away against Feyenoord, uh, Christian, uh, if I may say what I think, I just hope we bring the same 
uh, intensity as the first half we did today, even though we're playing Feyenoord. Um, even if it's at the cut, I know it's going to be a different game, but yeah, if, if we're going to sit back, let them come to us, it's going to be, it's not going to end well for us, to be honest. That will happen. You know that will happen. Yeah, but I don't think, yeah. Because, no. because Van Skip is a coward. He's a coward tactically. As a leader, we'll as see. a coward. Maybe, we'll see, man. Maybe he'll surprise you. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, comments. Uh, young <laughs> Rocky. Young Rocky. Ajax brings nothing but pain and tears to my life. I haven't smiled in months. Oh, man, that's not good. Um, Mark Wessling, can we just stop this season? Please. Uh, yeah. Um, I cannot read his name. Can you read it? B below? Bill below. Bill Bill. Bill. Hoyer is too bad to play for Ajax like most players. Ramai does stupid things often. I don't agree on the hype about him. I would like to see Ruli come back. Foss made a strong impression. Okay. That's possible. Um, I mean, no, there, there can be hype on Ramai to an extent because the amount of times he saved us this season, made very good saves and does play out at the, at the back. But, you know, if you're going to have a perfect season and give a 9 out of 10 every single game, why are you Ajax? Why are you not in the Premier League for Arsenal or for Man City or Barcelona or or Real Madrid or someone? You'd be, if you could play that week in, week out like that, 100 million go to a bigger club, right? You know, he's not going to play that well every week. You know, you need to, you know, you need, you need to be able to take some and give some. Like we do with Hato. Sometimes he had a bad game. No one jumps on his back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, Steve is saying uh, two wins in nine matches. Ajax is pretty stable. Bit of a wink, sarcasm. Uh, Arco Fokker saying, Juan, you're the best. Thank you, Arco. Appreciate you too. Um, oh, he's saying you two are most nice to listen to. Thank you. Um, That's because we're done with today. <laughs> uh, Murda Inc. is saying, Ramayo was joking too much today. I just felt like, you know, he does always bring... I know he takes time to find the pass solution, uh, which is, you know, his thing. But he creates a little bit of the thing is when a goalkeeper does that, that's the only thing I want to say, once is fine. But if you do that repetitively, it brings, you, uh, you know, like holding the ball very long. So Wait, uh, Waiting for a player to press. Yeah, yeah. Waiting for players to pa pass. And then he makes a wrong pass, which happens also a lot. And not only today, but in recent games as well. He always has like one, two, three passes that go horribly wrong. When you do that, it doesn't create a lot of confidence in the back line either. You know, it's, it's, it's connected to each other, in my opinion. So he really has to improve on that. So the earlier comment about, you know, the hype about Ramai, I still think he's a very good goalkeeper. Don't get me wrong. But really didn't do those things you know he's not as good as a passer as Ramai is I know but he didn't keep um having those moments every game sure but you, you know you, ha you have to think about it from this perspective as well is that every team we play against are going to be confident and they can press us and win the ball so it makes it more difficult for him and also you've got defenders that aren't amazing on the ball you know Hatter's very young Kaplan's very young Wrench has never been great but still very young Right, and and the reason is because you're drawing a press, and then he finds the next one. So when he's playing these longer passes to Robbie or to whatever, everyone's like, "Oh my god, amazing goalkeeper!" When there's no long option because Bergwijn's not that option, you know, everyone everyone criticizes him. When in reality, we need to be better on the ball and understanding that when he plays the ball, it's what happens when you have three at the back. You have two at the back; they go wide. You could play down the middle, no problem. If you've got a third centre back, you have less players in the middle for the next pass. So if they come closer, you can't find the next one over because there's only two players in there. Do you understand? And this, why does it make any sense why we play this stupid five at the back system? Because Taylor's not even doing anything to come in midfield. He just stands there, cross-eyed, just on oh, both footed, doesn't do anything, and misses the chance at the edge of the box. Doesn't offer anything in this position. He was better when he was playing as a 10. I don't agree with you, to be honest, on, on the build-up, but that's a totally different discussion. I still think with three at the back, if you have two holding midfielders, you can still create triangles. Actually, you have more triangle options uh, to build up from the back, but you have to be uh, rotating. You have to be very well in rotating and creating space for each other. Because if it's static, like we we usually are, then it creates problems. Because then the opposition knows exactly how the ball will be distributed from the back. You understand what I mean? If you look at some of the big teams, even cities sometimes, they do have to um, pivot 
and then three at the back. They don't always play four at the back. No, I, I listen. I understand what you're saying, but but also the lack of you can't have a rotation at the back anyway. It needs to be structured because if you have a player who's left footed who rotates to the right side of the fence, who's not great on their right foot, you've got problems. He yeah, can't yeah, receive a no, play out. No, but listen, when we had Ten Hag, for instance, I know it's a different time, different era, different players. But how many times did we see like uh, Blind taking over, Timber taking over, um, Masrui taking over? They weren't fixed on a position. They will rotate in the build-up play and take each other's position. It creates confusion. I, it's very difficult to defend. I understand because Timber can play right back and Blind can play left back, but you never saw Blind go to right back, right? No, very no, rarely. No, no, like and, and and this is what I'm saying. So yeah. I and, and I understand that they can rotate and wrench can probably go out wide and but you can't have Gai come in and you can't have someone like you know, you can't have um Sitala go to right back. That's disastrous. Yeah. So I could be understand what you're saying, but we don't have the players to do that, right? And because you said it's a different time, but at the same time, it, the keeper has to be the one playing the ball out, um, because no one else can. I mean, Kaplan's doing really well with it, Hato mm-hmm. can, right? Mm-hmm. But it's a lack of options in midfield to receive the ball for me. And then if you're going to have a wide, you, you need wide players to stretch the pitch and receive it out wide. Hence, why you need Sosa instead of Taylor or someone to be wing back who's going to keep the width. Because, I mean, I mean, Hots wanted a drift and there was no one, it was only Taylor at wide. And what's he going to do? He's well, just going to pass backwards. Yeah. The, the thing I do agree with um, is that with this system, the wing backs are too far away for a, bit, for, for a decent build up, straight away from the back. You know what I mean, right? It has to go through, it has to go through somebody first to get there. You understand what I mean, right? Or it has to be a long pass, one of the two. Um, just finishing off on the, uh, uh, on the comments. Indirect saying, is there a reason from the bomb is rotting on the bench? Actually, it's a good comment because I didn't even um, think about it, but he didn't even bring him in. He preferred, to, I know it's a different position because he came in the way, but Fitz Jim came in and from the bomb, it just was And, the, and the thing is, I'm so yeah. happy for Fitz Jim because it's an opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes no sense. It yeah. makes no Steve sense. saying, from the bomb, loses. Um, from the moment, loses out to functional players like the Hirovich and Monster. Don't get it. Uh, don't get it either. That's not Ajax. So yeah. All right. Um, let's see if we have something else. You have to say no one talks about Linson like he was not there today. Actually, um, we we talked about Linson and um, Luke. You already said that he he did pretty well on the right side. It, it helps basically. But, yeah. Yeah, but the, yeah, and the thing is, he's not the type of guy that's gonna get twenty five goals, twenty five assists. He's not gonna be involved. He's the one who creates a space for someone to go in. In my opinion, he did it with, with Berghaus when he plays the ten, and Berghaus would cut inside or whatever. He's, he did it with Kai. Kai, um, I keep pronouncing the G's now in Dutch. That guy you on the right side. Oh, wait, wait. But you have to tell people why you're saying Kai right now because you're learning Dutch, right? Tell people yeah, you're learning a, Dutch. How's your Dutch um, right now? It's I haven't paid much attention to it because I'm stressed. So it makes me <laughs> not want to learn Dutch because, that, because, yeah. of, uh, because of Ajax. Um, but I can say Hoya, which is really fun, and Chot, so that's also good. Um, but Gai on the right side, he there was a lot of space for him to go into all the time. So I feel like Klinson allows that coming inside, but Taylor doesn't offer the exact same thing. And I know maybe the system is different because who's going to overlap on the left? It's not going to be Bergwijn, is it? He wants to be, uh, Chot wants to be inside or whatever. But, and I agree, and he won't get no credit because he's not involved in the play and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, as Steve said, he works his uh, butt off and gets little to no credits. And what he's saying, look, his operational speed, uh, so his handling speed and these kind of things is so slow. Uh, at least thinks more than, than plays. I don't agree with that, Javid. I know it's your opinion. Um, I respectfully disagree a little bit. Um, I think actually, I Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think I, I know what I know what he means. Yeah. When he uses it, he plays with his brain, plays with his head to yeah. make space. Um, yeah. but I don't I think he's I think he is um he's just a he's just something that facilitates other people. True. When he's on the ball, I don't think amazing what a dribbler, not like Hots. Uh I don't think amazing like amazing passing, not very creative, but exactly. he facilitates, he works hard, he makes space for the creative players to do so. And sometimes you need players like that. He's an intelligent player, but physically he doesn't bring something extra. You know? Like for me, like for me, a bit like Scherner, right? 
who was amazing in his own right, scored the free kicks and things like that. But mm. it was all about Frankie. It was all about Frankie driving with the ball. Yeah. And he facilitated, he allowed the space for him to do so. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. Agreed. I understand what you mean. Um, all right. I think that's it in terms of the uh, comments. I have one question. Just I know I know it's a bummer. We played Chavi. one one. Sorry, Chavi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You won Chavi. That's not my question. Um oh, I'll <laughs> no, no, that's not my question. I know you mentioned you won Chavi a couple of weeks ago, but um I want to just end the stream a little bit on a positive note. Looking at today's game and maybe recent games, last one, two games before, are there players you're, look, you're looking at right now which are maybe, um, you know, like may, maybe you're thinking, hey, uh, these players are surprised, you know, they, they're doing something I haven't seen from them before, or these players have potential, or these players are worth mentioning in terms of, you know, the future, next season, or whatever. I mean, we didn't even touch upon Kaplan today, but the difference was noticeable in my view between Sunday, no Kaplan, and today, Kaplan. Yeah, it's, 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 quite, it's quite obvious to talk about Kaplan, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it is. I don't think Wrench gets enough praise this season. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's like Linson, very, very quiet in terms of um, doesn't get the, the praise or doesn't get the you know, the accolades or the credit or anything for things he does, but he's very reliable now to an extent. I know he had a red card, if, you know, a month or so back yeah, or whatever, yeah. and he has those things in him, but everyone does. But you don't criticise him as such during a game anymore. And I think that's a good thing because he's just getting on with it. And I don't know if it's because he's changed the centre-back or anything like that, but he looks comfortable to an extent. And I'm comfortable if I don't see him in the back three, if I see him ahead of Sutala, I'm happy if we play three. Yeah, but that, is it because Wrench is uh, good on the or ball. is it because Sutalo is that bad this season? <laughs> Both. You know what I think I mean? that the thing, but the thing is, is Wrench is able to, him him and Hato on each side, they're able to drive out with the ball if no one's pressing. If you need to bring the ball up, they can do so. Uh, Wrench is smaller, he, he's quicker. Sutalo is a donkey, so he can't run. He trips over his own feet and things like that. So, um, I, Wrench uh, is one. Um, I, Hillinson really like so much praise for Hillinson. I feel like, sadly, I feel like he won't be in the team if other players come in and Burkhouse etc. fit. Um, I think Hotz is starting to to come into the team, and I think if he continues to play and change games and really uh, influence games, I see someone like Hillinson maybe falling out slightly where he won't start as many. Um, I hope not because I really think he does a lot of the legwork in the team, a lot of the pressing, never wants to give up, always puts his body on the line kind of thing. Um, just want to say one more thing. Uh, Don was saying, I is really needing a good right winger like uh, Neres or Anthony because we do no, have... I love Neres, man. Love yeah. Neres. Never should have got rid. Yeah. You could tell he was always in Amsterdam because he was always like this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um Yeah. Though, though those two, hopefully, guy has a, has a better season, um, and I have hope for Mansfuck. But the the biggest one for me is is obviously Hato and Kaplan. We could say you know they're obvious ones. Wrench and Hillinson, um, I think, have been really good this season. Um, Hotz today was amazing, and hopefully, guy you can build on the, the last game. Yeah. Two, although, although, last, week, last couple of games. Do you think Guy would ever fit the Ajax system? No. Okay. You need you need ball players everywhere. You need people to understand football everywhere. And sometimes I feel like he, he might not understand it as such, which isn't detriment to him. It might just be the education he got at yeah, Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, thank you all for uh, joining the stream, guys. Sorry for the one one. Uh, I'm still a bit. Uh, Disappointed, actually. It's not going to go away, I think, tomorrow either. And we're heading to Feyenoord. Let's see how we do at the Cup. Um, they will be fired up, of course, as always. So hopefully we can bring something to the table, uh, to the Cup. And let's... I mean, would you, would you be happy... Uh, just a question. Would you be happy with the draw? Yeah. Yeah? You'll take it? I wouldn't want to go to get a draw. Yeah, yeah. If we left of a draw... If we left of a draw... 
with the effort we put in today in the first half, I would be content. I would be borderline happy. Okay. But I just, it, you, you kind of look at it with the, what's the point? Where's the end? Where's the, where's the light? Where's the, where are we going forward? You know, when, when's the next step up? It just feels like we're just it doing It feels this. like a survival mode every game. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Luke, thank you as well. Um, see you guys on Sunday. Take care, everyone. Peace.